Hey y'all, it's Pastor Tony. Imagine, Tuesday, March 31st, 33 AD. Jesus and his disciples are going to Jerusalem, to the holy city. They had been thinking about the day before all night because Jesus had cleansed the temple. And now Jesus is entering the temple gate, the temple mount where all the crowds are gathered and they want to hear him teach. And this time the chief priests, scribes, and the Pharisees are all at the back. And they're standing along the back to watch because they're already jealous of Jesus because so many people are following him. And they're angry with him also because he just messed up yesterday his profitable business. But they're also going to try to get the crowd against Jesus. And if they can get the crowd against Jesus in some way, maybe they're going to try this. They want Jesus to say something against the law of Moses or the temple. Really anything. Anything that would make the people doubt. So the religious leaders try to set up, and they set up four things. Trap number one, they ask the question, who's authority? So it's Holy Tuesday. Now, who's authority? They, they demanded to know. Had Jesus carried out his actions the day before the religious leaders said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you authority to do this? Meaning what happened yesterday? But Jesus doesn't take the bait. Instead, listen, listen, Jesus, instead Jesus asked them a question. And they think they're trapping Jesus. But Jesus asked them, was the baptism of John? That's John the Baptist. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? Now, they know if they respond from heaven, the next question is going to be the obvious. Then why didn't you believe John? Because John is the one that testifies about Jesus. If John's baptism was from heaven, why didn't the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, why didn't the religious leaders believe? Because John the Baptist called Jesus, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But if they say that, but if they say for man, the crowd would be against them because they believed John the Baptist was a prophet. So the religious leaders huddle up <laughs> and they answer Jesus, uh, we do not know. So Jesus said, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Done. Challenge was accepted. Complete. Done. But they don't stop. It's going to be going on all day. Trap number two going to try to find it out who Jesus allegiance is to. The leaders are trying a new tactic. They got to know if we send the Pharisees and the Herodians, the, those are the Herodians are loyal to Herod's dynasty. They're going to ask in front of the crowd this, and they got a, it's a great question. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Now they know if Jesus answered Yes, the people are not going to trust Jesus because they thought the Messiah will come in and overthrow Rome. No more Roman rule, no more Roman taxes. But if Jesus says no, then they could get Jesus arrested for starting a riot. <laughs> we got him either way, they're thinking. We got him either way. But knowing their hypocrisy... Jesus said to them, Why put me to the test? Bring me a denarius, the money. It's a coin. Let me look at it. And they brought one to Jesus, said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said to Jesus, Caesar's. <laughs> this is so cool. Here's, here's Jesus, what he says. Jesus said, Well, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And to God, the things that are God's. And now they, literally the Greek word says they marveled at him. 
Jesus was actually saying, pay your taxes and worship God. So they, you got to get another tactic. Trap three. Who's wife in the resurrection? I mean, that's a crazy question because after Jesus has silenced the Pharisees and the Herodians, the Sadducees, who don't believe in an afterlife at all, they think when you're dead, you're done. So they're trying to ridicule Jesus even by asking him the question. So they think they've got this trick question. They're going to get him all, you know, tongue tied up and he's not going to be able to do it. So they bring in Moses. Teacher, Moses wrote that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife, but leaves no child, the man must take the widow and raise up an offspring for his brother. So they're there. Then they said seven brothers. The first took the wife and then he died, left no offspring. They threw the whole thing. So then in the resurrection, when they rise again, whose wife will she be? They think they got him. I mean, they don't even believe this. I don't know why they're asking the question. For the seven had her as wife, like they really wanted to know the answer. Teacher, Jesus said to them, it is not the reason you are wrong because you're neither, <laughs> you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. That's going to be the end of his arguing with them. Everybody else is like, I'm just going to be teaching my disciples now. Everybody's silent. But they got one more, one more. Trap number four. They think they got it with a commandment question. So the Pharisees sent an expert in the law, like a scribe. Which of God's commandment is the greatest? And Jesus summarizes it. He said, love. I mean, basically, it's, it's one word. It's love. And Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe looked at Jesus. I think his heart was changing. He said, you're right, teacher. You have truly said that he is the one and there is no one besides him. Maybe Jesus had a new convert there. But the religious leaders are done trying to trick Jesus because Jesus then launches into this lengthy, <laughs> he goes after him. There's a seven different woes of pronouncing the seven woes upon all those religious leaders. The ju judgment will be upon them. He calls them hypocrites, blind guides. It's a full-scale verbal assault on them and it, re and it removes no doubt concerning Jesus and his intentions. So are they going to try to really get him killed by Friday? Yeah. Jesus has no desire to ally himself with the current religious leader hypocrites. Tuesday is done, but Friday is coming. Every word, every step, is for Jesus, for there is no other name. As we look forward to the horrible day of Good Friday, but the victory at Easter, who does Jesus say? He asked, Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. If Jesus asked the question, who do you say I am? 
How would you answer that question? Right now. Let's pray. I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I will always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys for watching.